boys and girls. I've been running all over the neighborhood looking for Frank. If you'll remember from last time, uh, Miss Kilgore opened the door and he escaped. But I don't know where he went to. Lynn, do you have any ideas? He said he wanted to reach new heights. What, you mean academically? No, I think he went up into the mountains. Up into the mountains? Who gave him that idea? When you told him about spelunking, he wanted to explore caves too. Oh, I see. Huh. Well, in that case, Lynn and I are going to have to head up to the mountains ourselves. So let me grab my mountaineering gear. In case it's cold and cloudy, I'm going to need a hat. In case it's the opposite and quite sunny, I'm going to need my sunglasses. And if we're going to go spelunking, of course you're going to need a light to go inside those caves. Another useful item will be some rope. I'm sure we'll make use of that. All right, boys and girls. This could well be a very perilous journey, but if you're willing to come with us, we'd appreciate the company. We may not come back for over an hour, but in any case, thank you for joining us. And if you see Frank before we do, tell him to come back to the steam lab where he belongs. All right, adios. Excuse me, I forgot one last thing. There's some coffee. <laughs>
and lower you into the cave and find out if Frank's in there. Mr. Carroll, this isn't going to be dangerous, is it? Oh no, I'll be perfectly safe. you but I feel pretty good about this Lynn. Okay I'm gonna let you down into the cave. Good chance Frank could be there. Bye bye. <coughs> I'll see you soon. And don't worry you're still under warranty I checked. Sorry about the scraping there. We just uh... We've got plenty of room don't we? Yeah we've got lots of well lots is kind of a relative term. I mean we've got more rope than some people. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to lower you down here and... It's starting to get dark, Mr. Carroll. Yeah, cave, caves are dark places. Uh, use your light. Um, and when you shine it, look around. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll find Frank and tell you the truth. I'm kind of at, tired of looking. I'm at the end of my rope. I don't mean that metaphorically. I mean that literally, of course. I, I think there's a... Uh, greater depth to this cave than I thought there was going to be and I think I found him Mr. Carroll. That's fantastic. Are you sure it's him? Yeah, I see him crystal clear. That's great. Well, I'm at the end of the rope. I should really let you go. I'll find my own way down. You stay with Frank till I get there. So at this point, I think we're going to do a little experiment and check out your impact resistance. And I got to let you go, and I'll check in with you in a little bit. See ya. Hey, Lynn, look what I found. A gigantic ladder. What a stroke of luck. Wow. Look at this place. This cave is just chock full of crystals. Amazing. You should, you should come up here and look at it. Well, I know you're tied up, but really the view is so much better up here. Hey, you didn't get damaged at all. Good job on finding the cave, Lynn. And there you are, Frank. Hey, why did you run out of the room when Miss Kilgore opened the door? I was tired of being inside. I wanted to get out. I understand. Aren't we all? Well, I'm glad we could get together today because we are going to talk about crystals. Not just because we're in a crystal cave, but because you've got crystals at home and we actually use crystals every day. For instance, look what I found in my closet. A skeleton. That's right. The bones in our skeleton are over 50% crystalline structures. And our teeth, the enamel on them, are also a form of crystal. Other uses for crystals include lasers. For instance, this lightsaber. I know it's not very big, but I have one on order from Naboo. Unfortunately, there's a trade embargo or some kind of issue between the Empire and the Republic right now, and eventually I'll get it. Um, but other uses for crystals include solar panels. You might have seen them on homes or on solar powered calculators. There's silicon crystals inside there. Speaking of silicon, Computers also use crystals. Those central processing units, they're built on silicon. You might have heard of Silicon Valley. And silicon is a form of crystal. And finally, LCD screens. I know you've used them before because the iPad has LCD screens. The C stands for crystals, liquid crystal displays. Well, anyway, let's talk about the crystals you're gonna work with today. What I'd like you to have at home is some salt, string, a measuring cup, some spoons, perhaps measuring spoons, a stick, could be a popsicle stick, could be a pencil, could be a stick from your yard, and an empty cup and some way of warming up water. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna heat up some water, stir in some salt or sugar, and find a way to create crystals. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your measuring cup, and I've already heated this water. Now this is the most dangerous part. When you heat up the water, please have an adult around or just make sure you don't heat it up too much. Maybe just for a few seconds in the microwave. 
Now, when I say heat up a cup of water, I actually mean eight ounces, because in science, we use numbers to be exact. There are different kinds of cups, like this big blue cup, or this little Dixie cup. But when we say cup, whether we're cooking or doing science, we actually mean eight ounces. So here I have eight ounces of heated up water. Now I'm gonna measure out teaspoons of salt. So what we're gonna do is you'll take the teaspoons and stir the crystals into your warm water. What they're gonna do is dissolve. Dissolve means they're gonna break apart into tiny little particles so that you can't even see them in the water anymore. And what you're gonna do is just keep adding more and more crystals until it can't hold anymore. That means it'll be saturated. So, so far I've added two teaspoons. Here's a third, and they're still dissolving beautifully. I can't see any of the crystals once I've been stirring a while, but eventually the crystals are gonna saturate the liquid. That means there's gonna be so many crystals mixed in, some of them are gonna drop to the bottom. Here I am at number four, they're still mixing in, they're still dissolving. Here's my fifth spoon. Okay, now I can see some of the salt is falling to the bottom of the cup. That means the solution is saturated. This liquid can't hold any more crystals. So there's no point adding any more. So I've added five teaspoons and now I'm gonna take my empty cup and pour my mixture in, my solution I should say. We have a little room at the top. Now you're gonna need your stick and your string. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your string and you're gonna tie it onto your stick. And on the other end of the string, you're gonna tie a paper clip or something with a little weight so that it sink, the string hangs into the water. So here I've tied on a paper clip. Now it's a little difficult to see. And I'm gonna lower it into the cup. Now right now the string is so long, the paper clip's hitting the bottom. So what you can do is you can rotate or turn the stick so the, paper, the string is a bit shorter. When you dangle it in the water, the paper clip should be in the water but not touching the bottom. And what's gonna happen over the next few days is the water is gonna evaporate and the crystals are gonna stay behind. And the goal is for the crystals to attach to the paper clip and, and as the water evaporates, the crystal will grow bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the hope anyway. But like I said, you can do it with salt or you can do it with sugar or if, you, or if you happen to have it, you can use borax as well. And while we're trying variables, and a variable is something different you try and experiment, you could also try using a pipe cleaner, which is also a good way of, uh, instead of a string of gathering up crystals. So this will take several days. So what I'd like you to do is eventually take a picture of what crystals you created, or if crystals don't form, let's talk about why they didn't form. But anyway, we should get back to the STEAM lab now. I'm gonna take Frank here, and I'm gonna take Lynn, and find a way to get out of here. It's gonna be awfully harm, hard to climb this ladder with them, but, oh wait, I think I see an exit through the gift shop. Well, it's been great having this time with you boys and girls. Good luck with your crystals. We'll check in next week and share what happened and how it went. So take care of yourselves, and. Frank and Lynn and I will be back to see you next week. Bye for now. Sure, I can buy you guys something in the gift shop. <laughs>